brother. Uh, you know, he was he was he was killed while he's in office as a young man, but uh, he really gave a lot of inspiration to his people there. I've been up there. I, I was up there one time. I saw a little boy, about 12 years old, saluting at the bottom of Sankara's grave. That was about 11 years ago, and I remember saying, "These kids ain't done." And you know, since then they've thrown the bums out. So Sankara is uh, now. This, uh, of course, I'm in Arenas. Since it's 60 BC, I have we of course have no idea what she looks like. However, she was one of the Candaces, the Kandakis. And in this case, she had gone into conflict with the the Romans because at that time the Romans were in in, in Egypt and they're trying to penetrate into black Afri blacker Africa going south. Well, Amenorrhenus, being one of the Kand Kandakis, had pulled her troops together and stopped them and counter invaded. So strong that once they reached a treaty with her not to come into her land, the treaty lasted 300 years before they dared again. By that time, the, the, the Romans were out of the mix anyway. So she basically kept Africa black, you know, because it just stopped them. I mean, so the young girls need to know, you know, this is the kind of sisters, you know, her and her army. No, the young you know. men need to know we're strong. Well, <laughs> well, the young men, of course, the men are standing here too, but they're already making assumptions, so you got to get this. Okay, what region? Yeah, what region? This is in Kush. This is in uh, uh, northern, what today would be called northern Sudan. Okay. Okay, yeah. Kush or, uh, yeah, Nubia, Kush, you know, there. Menelik, Ethiopia. I think a lot of you know Ethiopia is the only ones that main, really, by strength, maintain their uh, independence. They were never colonized uh, for a large part because of the brilliance and the courage of Menelik, who was able to understand he needed the arms and the organization, everything, to repel the um, Italians. Italians. And, you know, one of the well-known battles is Adwa, where uh, 1896, I guess it was, where he he kicked him out. So Menelik, twice too. Bless his heart. <laughs> bless his name. Malcolm, need I say more? Yeah. With his brother Malcolm, our shining prince. What else can I tell you? Yes. I think this group knows. The last prophet. By uh, any means necessary. That's right. Tetsueo, another one. You know, now he was a descendant from uh, Shaka. Still had that Zulu fighting spirit, and of course was able to. I don't know. If some of these movies they put out. You know, like. Um, uh, Zulu and Zulu Don, you know, they're like, they're older movies, they're real crazy. But still inside, you can still see that these Zulus had organized themselves to repel the British and win some serious wars. And as usual, all the way up and down the line, it's a the technological difference in terms of just, you know, guns and gunpowder and, you know, and munitions. And that's how we lost. It wasn't so much a lack of organization, certainly not a lack of courage but just a lack of being a little bit behind on the military technology, and that's how they took over the world. Akhenaten, you know, we talked about Queen T, the, the, the nephew of the son, you know, and they, they had moved the capital to another place. People say he was representing uh, monotheism, but really we had monotheism. And it was just a little bit of change of focus, uh, sun-based, with some sun-based, um, okay. I'm sorry. So, so I cannot do. So we can read some more about him too. Bob Marley. Um, Bob Marley. What can I say? You can't have black folk without Bob Marley. He's an ancestor. I read somewhere back about 15 years ago that the number one search name on the internet was Bob Marley. That was like 2001 or two or something. I don't know now. Huh? Bigger than the Rolling Stones. He's because he's, he's all over the world. I mean, people and, down in. And the in, Beatles. Yeah, well, some people down in South, someplace in Australia, or maybe Australia, but certainly not. Uh, in California. <laughs> Madagascar. What do they care about the Rolling Stones? But they know Bob Marley. You know, so. There's a lot of rap, um, white dreads in California. I'm, I'm telling you. Once. I'm telling you. I, I, in Long Beach, where I used to live, I, you go to the. The, the festival, and it's all everybody but African. Uh, Wangari Maathai, I think some of you all know she has uh, won the Nobel Prize. I listened to her speak, very clear, very uh, visionary sister. You know, she was known for, you know, planting the trees and the ecological, um, you know, emphasis. But she was very s strong political, politically, understanding the, the impact of co uh, colonization 
understanding the, the rupture in the culture. I mean, if you ever listen to her talk, you'll see she was more than just a brilliant agricultural, you know, uh, type person. Sing Bay Pie, some of you may have seen Amistad. You know, he's, if you saw the movie, you know something about him, but um, for the youngsters here, I like to let them know how we resisted. We didn't just get on the ship and just lay back and go, where are we going, you know? We, we fought, we resisted, we had mutinies, and we, everything, trying to get back home. And so they're trying to get over there, and <laughs> their people were trying to get back home. And now we're trying to get back home. So Fred Hampton, the chairman, you know, we know Black Panther. Shot is a very, very young man by you know Ch Chicago police and everybody associated, but uh, just shot for his potential. Every, if you ever get a chance to just look at Fred Hampton speak, you can realize why they had to get rid of the guy. He just had that thing that um, that we need in leadership. Samuel Maharero, I mean, some of you may have read um, about the genocide of the um, people in Namibia. Uh, the, the Herero people, well, he was one of the leaders who was trying to, of course, uh, stop that and make sure that they survived that genocide. A guy named Firpo Carr had written a book, I think it was called Black Genocide or something like that, I don't know, but did a very good job of uh, detailing the horrors of the Germans basically committing genocidal acts against the Herero there in what we now call Namibia. Uh, Oliver Tambo, he kept the ANC alive. You know, people talk about other people, but Tambo, without him in exile and all of the struggles he went through for all those years, you have to be sure you give proper credits to the man. Augustin Oneto, another one of our brilliant uh, freedom fighters, also medical doctor in Angola, of course, with MPLA, once they were able to break free of the Portuguese, he became the first president. He, along with Cabral and these guys, not only were they warriors, but they were brilliant. Zabeth, I put her here. Not many people. You're, you're Haitian. Do you know Zabeth? No. Not very many people have heard of this young girl. She was, of course, this is our depiction of her. She was 13, 14 years old, constantly being uh, beaten and harassed as a child, you know, on the plantations in Haiti. She escaped. They bring her back, beat her viciously. They even put a tattoo on her face, which I need to put on here, <laughs> you know. And then what she do? First chance, she's gone again. So at several times, this young girl, no matter how they tortured her and beat her, they can never beat her spirit into submission. So I like for the young, young ladies and the young men, like you said, to know about this kind of courage at such a young age. Sabbath. <laughs>